the tree house. So these are all things that we can think about when we're looking at sign from a new angle and asking the question like, what might a tree think of a tree house? Very good. So here's a bit of review for you. To make a topic more interesting, add interesting details. To make a topic more interesting, you can consider writing from an unusual point of view. Tip number three, observe the world around you. You can choose interesting ideas by closely observing the world around you. As you write, ask yourself questions like, what does ice cream really taste like? What color is the actual color of the sky just before the sun rises? You can generate interesting ideas by getting more and more specific. How did I feel when I hit the curb? How did my head feel when I hit the curb? How did my teeth feel when I hit the curb? And finally, my teeth rattled like dice as I hit the curb. What did the bird look like? What did the bird's, bird's eyes look like? What was the bird looking at? And finally, the bird watched us with pale eyes. So while we're on the subject of ideas and details, let's talk a little bit about main ideas. But firstly, I'd like to point out that your entire classroom, that your classrooms are full of ideas. So if you look around classroom A, classroom B, classroom C, starting with classroom A, then I notice the um, hockey sign on the wall. So maybe you could talk about a hockey game or you could talk about the desks that you're using right now and think, hmm, where were those made? or who made them, something like that. Or you could look around at your classrooms and, uh, your, sorry, classmates and your teachers and think, hmm, and what are these people like? What do I, what do I know about them? Um, when I meet them, what do we talk about? That kind of thing. And classroom B with blue walls then. Uh, and blue walls really, that's a beautiful color blue. So maybe you could even do a bit of investigative work and see how the walls came to be painted blue. Well, that's kind of a whimsical fancy mind. Or you could uh, talk about some of the things that you've learned recently. And there are many things you could really find from all around your classroom. And then classroom C with white walls then. Uh, I, I know you all sitting there very eagerly, then again, you could take so much from the classroom. I see a lot of nice light filtering, and I think that's either a window or a projector. I'm not sure which. So if it's a window, you can have a look outside even and think, hmm, how does what's outside affect what's inside here in my classroom? You could talk about uh, some of the things that your teacher has been telling you, learning recently. That is always a good one for all of you, actually. I like to point that out. You could think about the interactions you've been having with your classmates. So these are all good ideas that can apply to um, all of you. Okay, on the main ideas, so which brings me to tip number four, make a point. Interesting writing makes a point. In order to create powerful writing, you need to turn your topic into a point or main idea. How do you turn a topic idea into a main idea? Well, let's say there were some squirrels running through your classroom. Topic idea, squirrels. And so what's so special about squirrels? We could ask ourselves that question. Main idea, flying squirrels make great pets. Why do they make great pets? Back that up a little bit. And so finally, topic sentence, flying squirrels make great pets because they are intelligent and entertaining. Tip number five, once you've figured out your main idea and topic sentence, narrow your topic. A narrow topic provides plenty of specific details. So this is an example of a wide topic, Idaho. A narrow topic would be rafting through Idaho on the Snake River. Um, so let's narrow one of the following topic ideas. Uh, starting with, let's see, sorry, some of these are pretty um, regarding the states or something. Uh, okay, starting with, how about cats? How could we narrow the topic of cats? Okay, starting with classroom A, please raise your hand to begin. Um, how could we narrow the topic for cats? And I'll be writing this down. Cats, we could narrow that to brown cats. We could, so coloration might be an interesting one, brown cats. But again, I'm still thinking there are lots of brown cats. So. Maybe what's the breed of cat that is often brown? Could you maybe think about something like that? If anyone in any of the classrooms knows a special breed of cat that's usually brown, please raise your hand. Okay. I 
Okay, I see one raised in classroom C or Q. No, oh, okay. Siamese, yeah, it's sort of a brownish grayish color. I guess we can do that. Okay, Siamese. So we have narrowed this one, cats, brown cats, Siamese, and we could narrow that even more. If any of us know a particular Siamese, then we could, or a Siamese cat, a famous Siamese cat, or one that our neighbor has, or something like that, then we can put down the specific name of the cat, and then from that we could talk about the traits of that cat and what they do, or something like that. So that's one example. Now, let's see, uh, moving on, another topic we should try to narrow. Let's see, uh, we can choose one of the following. Ice cream, vacations, Roman emperors, sandwiches, fashion, making a mess, monsters, video games, Mexican food, or candy. Okay, I know, that's a huge variety. So let's start with ice cream. How could we narrow the topic of ice cream, uh, classroom B with blue walls? It's cold. Okay. Um, temperature of ice cream. So ice cream, you could narrow down to ice cream temperature. I'm putting it ice cream in there. Ice cream temperature. Brianna? So we could talk about that. Uh, we could maybe talk about a specific flavor of ice cream as well. So, um, yes, I heard something called. Brianna? Um, it melts. It melts? Well, let's see, these are all like specific observations. That's a specific observation about ice cream. So that is an excellent thing to observe. So in your everyday life, when you're eating ice cream, you can know if it melts, if it's not the right temperature, or something like that. But it's for a topic, then we need something that can also be supported by many other things that, ha that has topics under it, kind of. So melts could be part of a topic, but maybe not the entire thing. Although that's a direct. So let's move on to classroom C. And how could we narrow the topic of vacations? Vacations. Have any of you taken a vacation recently? Or in this year? Classroom C with white walls. Classroom C, we are trying to narrow the top of vacations. Sorry? Fun. Fun. Oh, I see. Well, let's see. Again, this is kind of a specific observation about a vacation. Yes, a vacation is fun. And that would be, and I think that you're, you're thinking of maybe um, topics and topic senses. So if our topic was vacations, then your uh, main idea might be vacations are fun. And then your topic sentence would be saying like, the vacations are fun because you get to eat lots of cool food or something like that. Uh, that's probably my personal one. But um, for narrowing a topic, what we're, it's a little different. Nar when we're narrowing a topic, we start with a big topic. So, for instance, one like uh, the American Revolution, that, uh, which, the American Revolution, I might narrow that down to a person in the American Revolution, which might narrow down to like George Washington or something. Now with vacations, if we were to narrow vacations, we would start with vacations and then narrow that down to maybe the time I, um, like a specific time you went on vacation, like, in 2004, I went to this place, and then uh, you would narrow it down to a specific vacation, and that would be narrowing the topic. Okay, so here's another example of narrowing a topic. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory could be narrowed to the author's opinion on greedy children. The French Revolution could be narrowed down to execution techniques during the French Revolution. Bats could be narrowed down to Thailand's cave bats, which is a little bit funny. Um, so that those are examples of narrowing your topic, finding main ideas, topic sentences, looking at things from a new angle, and adding details to your right. Thank you very much. Now it's open to a questions and answers session, starting with three minutes for classroom A.